Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school board, Dr. Heron. It is a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to present as a part of the series of equity through engagement on behalf of the Office of Student Service and Gifted Education on the topic of equitable practices. Let me set the stage this evening as we consider ways to recognize students with intellectual potential but who may be from traditionally underrepresented populations in gifted programs, including minority, economically disadvantaged, students with disabilities, or English language learners. We would like to share three areas we are working on to address disproportionality. The first is our collaboration with the Center for Gifted Education at William & Mary. Next are our professional development efforts in training kindergarten teachers. Finally is our Merging Scholars Program that addresses underrepresentation beginning in kindergarten. The first initiative has been our collaboration with the Center for Gifted Education at William & Mary. We began conversations in the fall of 2015. We wanted to increase the number of teachers in our division who were endorsed in gifted education. So we established a cohort of teachers who wanted to grow professionally by com completing the coursework to obtain the add-on gifted endorsement to their teaching license. William & Mary extended a discount to the tuition and in turn the school division understood the value of building capacity in its teachers and fully funded a cohort of 15 teachers. In fact, the teachers are about a week away from completing their coursework. Teachers learned about the social and emotional development of gifted learners, ways to develop curriculum and instruction, as well as program models in gifted education. Moreover, we are excited to announce that a second cohort will begin this fall. An informational meeting was held earlier this month, and teachers attended to learn about the gifted endorsement. Dr. Robbins from the center was there, as well as one of the current cohort participants, and boy, did he answer a lot of questions. Many applications continue to be sent out to teachers across the division. One of the teachers who participated in the cohort shared the experience, what it's been for him, and, and how he values the impact of the coursework. It's powerful to think about what will be the long range and long term positive effects on instruction across our division. And more specifically, increasing the number of endorsed teachers by 57%. Likewise, Mrs. Chambers, a participant in the cohort, she's a fifth grade education classroom teacher. She discussed how the coursework has impacted her instruction. I applied to the cohort because I knew I needed to provide better differentiation for my gifted students. It really has had a big impact. I've been able to differentiate by creating menus, making more independent um, stations and activities for my gifted learners, really challenge them within the general education classroom. I get to see you know, their different needs because they're not like all of the other kids. Every child is different. So with this coursework, I was able to see that they do have different needs and I can now reach those needs academically and emotionally for all of my students. The second area we wanted to share with you that addresses equity through engagement is our work with teams of kindergarten teachers to build an awareness of characteristics of students with intellectual potential from minority populations and who may be economically disadvantaged. Teachers are encouraged to consider all of their students, they serve in their classroom today, and they are asked to begin to link some of the characteristics to them. Then they receive their students' results from the universal screener we administer to all kindergarten students each year. I cannot tell you how rewarding and amazing it is to see those aha moments on the faces of the teachers. This year, I was particularly struck by one minority student who was developmentally delayed, an English language learner, and economically disadvantaged. She scored in the 99th percentile, despite situational difficulties, and her classroom teacher and the principal had tears in their eyes. They recognized that in spite of her environmental barriers, here is a student with incredible potential, and they were so glad that they now would be able to nurture it moving forward. Mrs. Herkman, a kindergarten teacher, described the impact of not only the administration of the screener to the kindergarten students, but how the results inform students moving forward. 
One of the six schools who has received the training is James River. Mrs. Meadows, a kindergarten teacher, shares her thoughts about the training and at how it informs her instruction. The training session that we do each year um, has given us a different perspective for our students, especially those students in the underrepresented um, subgroups that we see in our classrooms. Um, for example, every year we've ranked our students um, and, and thought about the students we feel have great academic potential. And when we have the results shared with us, it gives us another perspective and, and pleasantly, um, we've been pleasantly surprised to find students in the underrepresented um, subgroups that have great academic potential. So the takeaway for us is we change our instruction. It gives us a perspective of what we need to do with those students to help fill in the gaps. Um, so that we see that potential in our classroom. And the third equity initiative we wanted to talk about this evening is in fact our Emerging Scholars Program, which identifies students in kindergarten and will serve students through fifth grade. We currently have students in grades one, two, and three. Right now, Emerging Scholars is in eight schools and we will be in all nine elementary schools beginning in the fall. Our equitable practices endeavor to mitigate this disproportionality. The researcher Bernal noted that the brightest of minority groups have been mostly unidentified, underidentified, or misidentified. Our Emerging Scholars Program is structured so students receive personalized services to help them grow academically. The Office of Gifted Education is often asked how our school division addresses issues of disproportionality. We share strategies and ideas. We use to find and serve these students with potential from minority populations. I once said to an administrator from another state, these strategies may seem like a drop in the bucket, to which she interrupted me and said, at least you have a bucket. Indeed. So who are our emerging scholars? As was mentioned earlier, we administer a universal screening assessment to all kindergarten students, and results are used to find students with intellectual potential, but may who, lack th who may lack three A's, access, affirmation, or advocates in the home. Families, they just may not know how to advocate educationally for their children. When people think about students in gifted programs, they often envision, envision advanced readers or students who are eager to learn, our emerging scholars have demonstrated potential, but they may present instead with out-of-the-box thinking skills or street smarts. However, they also may come to the program with low self-esteem, self-identity, or even self-confidence. We incorporate opportunities to grow them not only academically, but socially and emotionally. Students work with gifted resource teachers on a multifaceted curriculum that includes creative thinking activities, engineering and design challenges, chess, as well as other strategy games that help scholars build critical thinking and social skills. Gifted resource teachers introduce children's literature and get books in the home. In addition, activities with parents include breakfasts and storytelling. The goal is to build confidence and self-esteem while encouraging our students to pursue the most rigorous course of study possible as they progress through school. The restructured program began in 2014 with 17 first graders from four elementary schools. Since then, we've doubled the number of schools and tripled the amount of participation in grades one through three. This graph represents our emerging scholars. It shows growth in students with disabilities, economically disadvantaged, and minority student participation over time. These lines all show growth in the subgroups, it's important to note that students can fall into one, two, or three of these groups, and the majority of our students fall into two or more categories. Here is what one gifted resource teacher, Mrs. Chapel, had to say about the emerging scholars. In addition, see what our scholars do. The Emerging Scholar Group has shown so much growth and so many changes from when they were initially identified in kindergarten to now, and my oldest group is in third grade. Uh, when they were younger, each week when they would come in, I got a lot of, I can't do that, or I'm, I don't think I can, can, and I would say, 
let's let's give it a try okay now when they come in each week they burst through the door they're eager to learn they're eager to try the strategy games or technology activities or research whatever we're working on it's like i can do this and my hope is that they will go back to their regular classroom with that level of confidence and that they'll be leaders in their class and they that they will grow to their academic potential and i know they will Here are a few quotes from our scholars and what they had to say about their experiences. I've got this. I can do it. Can I show this to my class? When one student was asked if he liked coming to Emerging Scholars, he responded, I love it. I mean, I really love it. In addition, a classroom teacher considered the value of the Emerging Scholars program. She said, I love the push for the Emerging Scholars. There are certain students who were found eligible in the past few years for whom I really think the opportunity can be life-changing. I want all of the children I teach to love learning, but for some, the outside factors can negatively impact the performance we see at school. So in summary, all three initiatives presented this evening, from the gifted cohort to the training for teachers to recognize gifted characteristics in underrepresented populations to the Emerging Scholars Program, are different ways we are trying to break the cycle of deficit thinking. The less we know about each other, the more we make up. We see their potential, meet their educational needs, and not focus on their deficits. Rather, we are committed to building equity through engagement with many varied stakeholder groups. Thank you very much. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions.